Okay, we're good to go. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue au Conseil de mi-mois, le mois de juin uh, 2020. Uh, I think we will start with, we have several uh, council reports and before our councillor reports, before we do, I'll just comment on a few things that, uh, first of all, I would just like to, you, you may see around the city some graduations happening at high schools all throughout the city. This is not how the class of 2020 was hoping to spend their grads. Um, but nonetheless, on behalf of council, to all the students who are finishing grade 11, we wish you the very best. We know that uh, the future is bright and you're graduating in a time of what we hope is great positive change for this world. And so we may not have uh, been expecting COVID, but um, it is, we hope, uh, a time of great change. And as we see young people, especially rising up in the Black Lives Movement as well across the city of Montreal and in Westmount, we salute you and we wish you the very best as you head into stage up for many of you, which you, I'm sure we're not hoping that it was online. And I guess, you know, that, that there's, things are changing every day on, uh, on how schools are gonna operate, but uh, on behalf of council, we wish you the very, very best. Um, and so uh, you'll see across the city, we have many things reopening and they won't look exactly how they did in years past and summers past. And we know how much the pool means to people, how much day camp and tennis means to people. And we're doing our very best to open them uh, always with the safety of our residents in mind. So I just wanna thank all the teams at uh, our teams at Sports and Rec and Public Works that have gotten, they're working really hard to keep our parks safe uh, and accessible for everyone. We need residents to do their part. I will reiterate this every time we have a chance, there is not a maid service in the, in the parks of Westmount. And when you bring your garbage in, take your garbage out. Uh, we're working hard to try and keep up to it, but we have probably four times as many people in the parks as we did before. And now even more, now that the playgrounds are open, you can see it, they're packed. Um, but we just, we hope that you respect uh, your neighbors and your friends and take the garbage, uh, either put it in a garbage can or in the recycling bins or just take it with you. Um, but you will see uh, over the coming weeks, the pool open um, and the jungle gyms have opened and the tennis courts, we will have some changes with that where you can bring a guest that's not a resident. So um, I encourage you all to, or those who are listening um, and to tell your friends and your neighbors, watch, what, watch our website, watch our social media platforms. There's information that changes daily on there and, um, you know, we, we put it in the Westman Independent, but that's once a week and it often has changed by the time uh, we've sent it to the Westman Independent. So uh, on that note, I would ask um, Councillor Bostock if she has any updates. Good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, just a couple of quick updates um, to let you know that between June 3rd and 12th, more than 2000 masks were handed out to residents at different locations around the city. We are planning additional mask distributions in the uh, coming weeks. So please keep an eye on the city website and all our social media platforms to find out the dates, times and locations of those uh, mask distributions. Um, our grocery assistance program is going to be ending in the next two weeks and uh, public security officers are slowly introducing seniors who have been using the service uh, to various alternative options for their grocery pickup and delivery moving forward. Uh, and starting on June 16th, and that's tomorrow, uh, at the Summit Woods, dogs will be allowed off leash uh, between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. And this is in effect until October. And a reminder to ensure that your dog license is up to date and you can go onto the city website for more information on that. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor uh, Cutler, did you have anything that you wanted to update? Yeah, I, I do just very briefly. Um, I'll be awarding contract for line painting later this evening. Uh, as many of you may have noticed, if you've been out on the roads, we have not had our lines painted yet. So we're, we're behind. We had difficulty getting bids. Um, 
on the tenders anyway. Um, we now have, hopefully will be approving in a, a short period of time here, um, a three-year contract. So um, this won't be an issue for the rest of our mandate here uh, and beyond. So um, we got that resolved, but we do apologize. I know it's an inconvenience um, and it can be dangerous in some areas, but it should be resolved uh, shortly. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Shammy, you had any, you had an update? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, fellow councillors, members of the Westmount community. You know, I think it's the time for us to, to make comments on what's happening around the world and in our own neck of the woods. In the last months with COVID and the news reports of heightened tensions uh, arising from the issue of racism, systemic racism, and how society has uh, fared in redressing instances of past and present injustices have been challenging for all of us Westmounters and indeed all Quebecers and Canadians. With regards to the COVID, I, we take heart in Westmount, uh, the fact that at least uh, the curve uh, is flattening. We're particularly pleased to see the positive trend in our seniors residents. Uh, and we're also well aware, we must continue to be vigilant. Uh, community members, ladies and gentlemen, we must continue to wear our masks to maintain physical distancing and wash our hands as often as possible. With regards to racism, I know that the mayor and fellow councillors, as well as all those who work for the city, uh, are united in one common belief, respect for human rights, respect for dignity, and honourable treatment of all people, regardless of race, religion, nationality, culture, or language, is a fundamental principle, of course, for our city uh, and for all our residents and for our, our province and for our country. In the past, we've spoken eloquently and forcefully for, for, their right of our, for the right of our citizens to receive services in French and English. We've also voiced our opposition to legislation preventing certain public sector employees from we wearing uh, overt religious symbols and clothing in the workplace. But today we're once again declaring our unqualified condemnation of racism against any group or individual. And through our policies and our actions, we fully support civil rights and freedoms to which our residents and all of Quebecers and Canadians are entitled. But these times demand more than just words. And I recognize as an elected representative, my privilege and my responsibility to listen, to listen, to hear the voices from our marginalized and underrepresented members in our community. I urge all of us to come together to promote diversity, equity, inclusion in our society. We must do more to advance the health and well-being as well as the careers of those underrepresented groups. And as a father of four daughters, every day I try to teach my children to do more, to be more inclusive and to build bridges with our neighbors. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor Shammy. Um, and now I hand it over to Councillor Peart. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as, the, as a lone person of color on this council, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention the release of the landmark report by the Office de la Constitution Publique de Montréal, summarizing a months long public consultation on systemic racism and discrimination in Montreal. This report reveals what should be obvious to many in that the lived experience for racialized groups and indigenous person, persons is indeed subject to systemic racism and discrimination. The report lays out 38 recommendations spread out over four phases. The first and the most important in my mind being an acknowledgement of the problem. I encourage you all to take the time to at least read the summary report. I hope that this report provides the Ville de Montréal with a clear strategy and a framework for change. I hope that the actions live up to the vision and the promises. Only once, only once all of our residents are able to find full and equal participation in our daily lives, will we be able to claim equality in our cities. When my parents arrived in Montreal from Jamaica 60 years ago to attend university, their lived experience was vastly different from my years growing up in Ottawa and Montreal. Now, as the first elected person of color in Westmount, I hope that my young daughter can look back to these times and know that we stood up and participated in change. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Peart, uh, for your words on that. And I hope that not just council, but I hope that citizens across the island of Montreal and certainly in Quebec. And uh, I certainly hope our premier reads the report. Um, and 
you're very right. One of the, the, the most important parts I believe and agree with you is acknowledgement, um, which they set out at the very beginning. So um, thank you for your comments on that and your insight on that. Um, Councillor Breschke. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Very powerful words and hard for me to follow, <laughs> but um, uh, the OCPM report, I just wanted to quickly say um, that more than 22,000 Montrealers participated in the consultations that took, started to take place in 2018. And um, there were over 7,000 in-person and online participations recorded over the various stages of that consultation. And it's the longest, it was the longest and most exhaustive process led by a paramunicipal organization in its 18 years of existence. This uh, definitely our voices and as elected officials, we are listening to them. We must read this report and uh, digest it and see how and what can we do uh, better. Uh, so um, yes, I do encourage everyone to uh, read the report and the recommendations. Um, and let's, let's talk about it and let's share. Um, my update, another update for today is uh, the hazardous waste collection. Um, so it's taking place this Saturday uh, at the public library, Westmouth Public Library. Um, and it's a drive-through uh, drop-off uh, regular hours as usual from nine until, I believe nine until um, five, nine and, until five at the parking lot. So it's 4574 Sherbrooke Street West. And uh, that's it. All the information's on the city website. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Breschke. Councillor Gallery, do you have? I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already the middle of June, um, but hopefully we're all taking advantage of these beautiful and long sunny days. Um, I have a few updates. I just want to bring your attention to the fact that we will be celebrating both our Fête Nationale celebration and our Canada Day celebration will be online. For the Fête Nationale, there will be an online quiz. And for Canada Day, there will be an online concert. All our information will be on our website and in our social media um, distributions. Uh, additionally, we started curbside uh, pickup service at the West Nile Library. Started last Monday and uh, everyone's getting used to it. It's working well. and. Um, and we're very happy to be able to pr be providing this service to the residents that uh, everyone's been waiting for. So uh, with regard to day camp, uh, registration started last week. Um, there was originally going to be one spot per person. Now there are a few more spots, so we will be allowing families to allow their children to attend more than one session. Um, with regard to tennis, uh, tennis lessons registration started today. And going forward, as the mayor mentioned, we'll be allowing Westmount residents to purchase guest passes for play. And lastly, we're all very excited to, we now know the pool will be opening next Monday. And uh, I just want to thank the sports and rec team for all their hard work in reopening of almost everything that the city has to offer. So we're getting there and uh, uh, the summer is ready to kick off here in Westmount as best we can in these uh, challenging times, but uh, thank you and see you all out at the pool and the fields and the tennis courts and the library. Thanks. Uh, thanks. And just on uh, Canada Day and St. Jean, I think one of the great, uh, one of the things that I will truly miss as a mayor is the Canada Day uh, citizenship ceremony, which we've hosted in Westmount for the past couple of years and where you get to hear from people from all over the world whose some whose journey has been easy to get here and some who's who have had an incredibly difficult journey but all of them were so always so so proud to be getting their citizenship and it was such an honor to be a part of it so i look forward to the day when we can when we can do that again and as soon as we can we promise that we will do that in victoria hall so thank you for all those updates and to the sports and rec team and everyone over there. I know you've been busy adapting to this new reality of uh, launching that. So uh, Councillor Lullum. 
Thank you, Mayor Smith. Um, so tonight, um, I'll be moving an expenditure in the amount of $242,442 um, for arboricultural arbor work, including tree cutting and stump removal. This is part of our actions to both remove, as we see every spring when the trees leave out, we find out that there's more trees that are dead um, from the uh, Dutch elm disease, from the ash borer disease, et cetera, um, from age, uh, many factors, but the ash borer disease being the, the largest. So um, already I've had many comments from people about various dead trees around the neighborhood. So for them to know that uh, we have, um, we will be hopefully passing this uh, tender to engage um, company to remove the trees and the stumps. This follows on a uh, recent completion of the replacement program, the first phase, uh, well, second phase of the replacement program, where we planted 125 trees around Westmount and also in um, some in the parks um, to replace previously cut down trees. So that uh, was completed at the beginning of May. In the fall, we'll be having a second uh, planting program of another 125 trees. Um, and as well, we had in the fall a um, program of 100 trees. So uh, we are you know, continuing to both cut down the dead trees and remove the stumps. And then with a replacement program, we have a new arboriculturist and uh, very pleased to welcome him on board and uh, things are moving forward. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lalam and Councillor Kez, do you have an update? Yeah, I have two updates. One being about the fact that our independent audit, which was performed by Raymond Shabat Grant Thornton and the resulting financial and auditor's report will be tabled by the treasurer and will be forwarded to the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et de l'Habitation. And the 2019 financial statements will be available on the city's website for consultation shortly. And the second thing I'd like to mention is that I will be giving a notice of intention to adopt later this evening to postpone the second payment of the municipal taxes from June 29th to August 27th. And that's it. Okay, thank you. And residents will see, we will post all that information on the delaying of taxes on our website. Uh, you will see something in the newspaper this week and all, on all our social media platforms, but you will also receive a letter uh, with all the details at home on that. Okay, thank you. So if that's it for council updates, on va commencer avec l'ouverture de séance. Numéro 4, l'adoption de l'ordre du jour, Monsieur Cutler. Merci, Madame la mairesse. Je propose que l'ordre du jour de la séance ordinaire du Conseil du 15 juin 2020 soit adopté. Merci. Puis j'ai un appuyeur. Councillor Lullum, all in favor? Carried. Uh, item number five, the confirmation of minutes. Again, Councillor Cutler. Merci encore. Je propose que le process verbal um, de la séance ordinaire du Conseil tenu le 1er juin 2020 soit approuvé. Thank you. A seconder, Mayor, uh, Councillor Gallery, all in favor? Carried. Uh, reports to Council, item 6.1 is uh, me. The following documents are tabled by law RCG 15-082-2 entitled Règlement modifiant la règlement sur les subventions relatives à la revitalisation sur les rues commerçants. Uh, Programme Réussir Montréal Commerce, RCG 15-082, and Resolution CG 20-0282 of the Montreal Agglomeration Council adopting said bylaw, and bylaw RCG 15-083-4, entitled Règlement modifiant le règlement sur les subventions relatives à la revit revitalisation des secteurs commerciaux faisant l'objet de travaux majeurs d'infrastructure, Program Réussir Montréal, Artère en Chantier, RCG 415-083 and Resolution CG 20-0283 of the Montreal Agglomeration Council adopting said bylaw. Um, the City Clerk, do I really need to read all of these? 
or can we just table them? I really we can we can table them. Maybe uh, just for reference purposes, we can say the bylaw RCG and the number. Okay, so bylaw RCG 17-023-2, um, bylaw RCG 19-017-1, um, bylaw RCG 19-017-2, bylaw RCG 19-030-1, uh, um, bylaw RCG 19 uh, dash zero three one dash one and bylaw RCG twenty dash zero one four dash one um, and many of that uh, many of those initiatives are related to uh, the status of emer the emergency measures for the city of Montreal during COVID as well as some revitalization projects for commercial sectors throughout uh, throughout the city um and different initiatives that uh, have been put forward to deal with the impact of covid um item 6.2 councillor cutler minutes of the general committee the minutes of the general committee meeting of council held on may 19th 2020 are tabled and available on the city's website okay item seven councillor kez the filing Sorry. of the financial report for 2019 fiscal year in accordance with section 105.1 of the Cities and Towns Act, CQLR, Chapter C-19, I confirm that the Treasurer has tabled the financial report and the auditor's report for the fiscal year 2019, and that this document will be forwarded to the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et de l'Habitation. Sorry. I'm just going to going to interject. We had one question uh, that could, of course, be read at the second question period. But given that it arguably could relate to the agenda itself, the items on tonight's agenda, uh, perhaps uh, we could we could do our. Uh... Sorry, Mayor Smith, you're uh, on mute. Sorry, I forgot that about the first question period and not the second. Um, so, do you want me to deal with the question now or at the end? Well, yeah, if we don't, just because, as I said, uh, generally first question, if it could pertain to something on the agenda and, and arguably this one, this one uh, does in a set to a certain extent. So I'll just, uh, I'll read our question before we continue with uh, item eight. Perfect. This, this uh, is a question from Dan Lambert, uh, so the Association of Pedestrians and Cyclists of Westmount. And the question is entitled, replace construction cones with bollards along the Lansdowne bike path slash social distancing corridor. Now, here's the preamble. Since the start of COVID, we have observed an increase in the number of cyclists along the Lansdowne bike path, including many Westmount families and sports cyclists heading to the Lachine Canal bike path for fresh air and exercise. The bike counter on Lansdowne below the Mezzanine shows that up to 1300 cyclists are using this path on nice days. In addition, as our economy reopens, we are expecting more commuters to choose to travel by bike rather than public transportation to limit the chance of contracting the virus. Unfortunately, the white line painted on Lansdowne last year to identify the bike path between Westmount Ave and Sherbrooke Street was never protected by bollards and so was quickly erased by drivers along much of its length. At the start of COVID, construction cones were added to define the SDC, Social Distancing Corridor on Lansdowne, but they are constantly being moved towards or onto the sidewalk by contractors and delivery trucks, forcing cyclists to swing out into the driving lane to pass the displaced, displaced construction cones while riding down a hill, a risky maneuver. Pedestrians simply lose the SDC at those locations. As a result, the safety of many Westmount cyclists in particular is compromised. The question is as follows. The safety issue can be remedied simply and inexpensively by replacing the construction cones with flexible bollards which cannot be moved, but which trucks can drive over if necessary without breaking the bollards. Last week, we forwarded this request to Public Works, hoping that with Council's agreement, it will be considered at the next PAC meeting. That's all. That's the question. Okay, um, I actually, uh, we have a TAC meeting tomorrow, so I will, I, I think this is on the agenda. Uh, Dan, Mr. Lambert, I agree with you. Coming down Lansdowne the other day, I saw that so many of the cones were moved that it basically 
we, we have we have eliminated the bike path by having the construction cones there because they've been moved into the bike path. So they're not only not extending a corridor, they're taking away a bike path. So we will look at uh, the options. And as Councillor Cutler had mentioned before, the line painting uh, is starting and certainly we should, we could try and make that a priority where um, like on a bike path and things like that. So we will discuss it tomorrow and figure out how we can uh, make this a better option, but certainly the construction cones in the middle of the bike path is not, uh, is not the option that we want. Does anyone else want to comment on this? I'm sure you have all seen it, especially as you come down from uh, Cote Saint Antoine to Sherbrooke Street. Um, so it'll be addressed at the TAC tomorrow, uh, and then we will get back to Mr. Lambert with the outcome on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, is that it for questions? Yes, that's all. Okay, so remind me where we are. We were at uh, item number eight, um, I believe is, yeah. Correct. Oh, Item number eight, which is Councillor Shami, appel d'offre publique for mutual livraison de vêtements de travail pour la ville de Westmount. Thank you, ma Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $94,488.75, uh, including tax credits for the supply and delivery of work clothing for the city of Westmount, tender number PUB 2020-020 and to award to Quality Sport Limited the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $103,477.50, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders PUB 2020-2020. To allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1018. Uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Gallery, any further comments on this? Uh, it is for shirts and other city uniforms. So uh, uh, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Um, item number nine, call for public owners professional services of an engineering firm for manhole inspection and preparation of manhole rehabilitation plans. Councillor Cutler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $79,699, including tax credits for professional services of an engineering firm for manhole inspection and preparation of manhole rehabilitation plans, tender number PUB 2020-021, and to award infrastructel Inc. the contract for this purpose adds bid price for a maximum amount of $91,633.93, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders PUB 2020-021. Oh, and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1020. Uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder on this? Councillor Bostock, any further comments on this? No, this is uh, purchasing um, as explains. Okay. Perfect. All in favor? Carried. Um, item number 10, call for public tenders, arbor arborocultural work, tree cutting and stump removal. Councillor Lullum. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $242,442.38, including tax credits for the arbocultural work, tree cutting and stump removal, tender number PUB 2020-029, to award to 9187844 Quebec Inc. Service d'entretien d'arbre bio, the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $265,506.02, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders PUB 2020-029, and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information, including in the decision-making file number 2020-1026. Uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder on this? Councillor Shami, uh, do you have any further comments on this? No, it's what I spoke to in my report. 
Okay. Any other comments on this? Um, if I may, Mayor, um, I I understand the importance of uh, felling trees or taking down trees that are sick. Uh, it's a health hazard, etc. Safety hazard. However, uh, because I have not received sufficient information from the administration, I will not vote on this item. I will just underline that this expense is to take down 176 trees, and uh, we are planning to replant 125 in the fall. This is a deficit, and I still don't understand how we will fill this deficit, and I haven't seen yet a plan on how to handle um, um, our natural assets and ensure that the trees are being planted. And as you know, tree planting offsets carbon emissions. And on my for my commissionership, uh, this is an item that I would uh, appreciate to have more information on. Okay, so, so we will be sure uh, that the administration gets you those details. The trees are being and recognize that uh, you want uh, more information on where uh, the trees are going in but you will have to vote one way or the other. Um, you cannot abstain. Uh, the city clerk can correct me on that, but I think because you are here, you have to vote one way or the other. Okay, so I would say um, on that, uh, I'm sure that uh, the director general has taken note of the administration to get more details on, uh, on that going forward. So all in favor and anyone against? There you go. Okay, thank you. The motion is moved. Um, and now we move to item number 11. Uh, again, Councillor Cutler is on uh, call for public tenders, street line painting for the city of Westmount. Madam Mayor, I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $133,215.13, including tax credits for the 2020 fiscal year. For the line for the street line painting for the city of Westmount, option two, tender number PUB 2020-048 toward Entreprise TRA uh, 2011 Inc. The contract for this purpose at bid price for a total amount of $446,893.94, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders PUB 2020-048 to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1035. Thank you. Uh, do I have a seconder on this? Councillor Shammy, any further comments on the line painting? You already addressed it before, but. The three year agreement. That's why the total amount is um, 446. Okay. Um, there's 133. Okay. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing the trucks out at night painting the lines throughout the city. Um, all in favor? Carried. Uh, item number 12, notice of motion bylaw 1560 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year summer camp. Uh, this is again, um, is this the city clerk or no, council gallery, sorry. Je donne avis de motion de l'intention de soumettre à une séance ultérieure du conseil municipal. Um, non, de motion de l'intention de soumettre à une séance ultérieure du conseil municipal le règlement numéro 1560 intitulé règlement modifiant de nouveau le règlement 1544 visant à établir les tarifs pour l'exercice financier 2020 camp d'été. L'objet de ce règlement est d'ajuster les frais de camp et d'été pour répondre aux besoins des résidents face à la pandémie de la COVID-19. Une copie de ce projet de règlement est déposée et disponible pour consultation. Uh, merci beaucoup. We do not vote on this, the city clerk. Um, Actually, there's, there's no vote. Uh, just to be clear for the previous uh, item, the street line painting, the seconder, uh, was there a seconder or did we uh, perhaps? I think it was Councillor Shammy was the seconder, I think. Mm -hmm. And then- okay, well, Councillor is, is Councillor Shammy seconding it now? 
Councilor Sammy will just, second. And just in case, we should maybe have a vote on it now, just in case. Okay, so we go back to street line painting. Councillor Shami is seconding. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Um, and thank you, okay. Councillor Gallery, for the notice of motion. Do you have any, there's no vote required on that, but do you have any no, it, comments? It's, it's basically we had to raise the weekly rate of the camp slightly to accommodate the increased COVID cost fees and the additional staff uh, that are required to um, accommodate the camp. Okay, thank you. And uh, as Councillor Gallery stated, it is a slight increase um, and doesn't cover all of the costs, but uh, we had to do a slight increase. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 13, Councillor Peart, Urban Planning Approval of Building Permits. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that according to recommendations made by the Planning Advisory Committee at its meetings held on June 1st and June 2nd, 2020, the building permit applications appearing on the attached list reviewed under bylaw 1305 on site planning and architectural integration programs be approved. Thank you, Councillor Lullum will second. Um, any major projects in here? Um, it's mid month, so nothing major. Okay, um, but they are, uh, PAC continues to meet via, it does online meetings as does the Board of Inspection and um, Urban planning is very much up and running. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Uh, item number 14 uh, is new business. And I hand that over to, uh, who is who is moving the new business? It's Councillor Kez, right? Item 14.1, Major Branstein. Yeah. Councillor Kez. Okay. I give notice of the intention to submit for adoption at a subsequent meeting of council bylaw number 1561 entitled bylaw to further amend bylaw 1545 to impose and levy a tax and a compensation for the 2020 fiscal year. The object of this bylaw is to postpone the date of the second payment of the property taxes and compensation for municipal services to August 2017, 2020. The object of this bylaw is also to, to amend interest rates and penalties. This measure is intended to support the city of Westmount taxpayers during this time of pandemic. A copy of the draft of the bylaw is tabled and available for public consultation. Thank you. Um, you had addressed this earlier. Do you have any further comments on this? Yeah, this has changed the second time this is changing, but we're able to change it now because our code par to the AGLO will be due September 2nd, thereby allowing us to extend the postponement for our citizens. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you. And all of the details will be on our website and uh, other social media platforms, as we said before. So if you do have any questions or concerns, um, please contact the city and we will uh, address those. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kez. And that uh, brings us to the second question period. Major Brownstein, has anyone submitted a question while we have been talking? Um, no questions appear to be submitted. We have uh, some people watching and a comment or so, but no, no questions. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, with that, we adjourn this mid-month council meeting and we will... Uh,